But football and literature goes together for you. Uh, <clears throat> well, it, did, it, it never has before, because there's never been any good writing about football. Okay. Um, so we don't talk about it anymore. Until now. But that's why I wrote it, because there was no good writing. I mean, if you're an American, this, I mean, the most boring game in the world has to be baseball. <laughs> uh, have you been to a baseball match? It's crap. It just goes on and on and on, and there are innings, and people don't manage to hit the ball. Um, <laughs> and you think, why are we here? It's just so boring. <laughs> and yet, there's a huge amount of writing about baseball. And I kept thinking, why is there no good writing about football, which is a much more interesting game? than baseball. You know, people like sort of, you know, Updike have written about baseball and Don DeLillo thinks he's written about everybody's written about baseball. So I thought it was time somebody did. And also there's so much crime in, in football anyway. You sound a little bit like Scott Matthew. Yeah. Yeah, 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 probably. There is uh, uh, there is in your book there's a line, may I read it in, in German, yeah? Um, because uh, Scott Manson, das ist der Fußballtrainer, um den es gleich gehen wird, das ist der, der, der dritte Thriller, der third one, the third novel, about him and football, um, schreibt auch Bücher. Er spricht viele Sprachen, he's a very intelligent man, a very smart man, and rich, good looking, Love to have a class <laughs> and a lady on his arm. Yeah, oh, yeah. so far, so much. He's, he's, he's born in Edinburgh, like you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But he's a bit younger, no? He's a bit younger. Yeah, yeah. He's a bit more vigorous. He's uh. thinner. <laughs> okay. He's, I'm, I'm a there's thin no man picture, inside. so. Yeah. Yeah. Thin man inside that one. But there's a funny line in, in your book. Uh, this is Scott Manson. Um, spricht über sein Buch. Ich hätte einen Ghostwriter anheuern sollen, Roddy Doyle oder Phil Care. <lacht> Care ist teurer, sagt man. Dafür muss man ihn nicht als Co-Autor angeben. Das heißt, er hat schon für so einige große Fußballer geschrieben, wahrscheinlich weil er unter den Ghosts noch einer der Transparenten ist. So, have you ever been a Ghostwriter? Um, I haven't, no, but I'm waiting for the call. <lacht> I, I, I thought it could be an offer. I mean, well, yeah, I, mean, I hope not for Roddy Doyle. Uh, no, well, Roddy Doyle did a pretty good job, actually, yeah, yeah. I think, actually. I mean, he made that book interesting. If it is, it would be crap. Mm. Uh, but most, I mean, most biographies of autobiographies of footballers are crap. I mean, they're boring, and you know, you've heard it all before. And I, I just look forward to the day when a footballer has the you know, intelligence to pick someone, you know, wholly unsuitable to write the, uh, the autobiography. Someone who can write. Well, Roddy, Roddy can write, and that, but that's, that's it. But most footballers just contract some journalist, that, you know, who will do what they're told. So, this is not a biography. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that. Falls Nine. It's uh, the third novel, and will it be the last or not? Mm. Because I read somewhere that you plan to write three books. Yes, I did. I did. Um, Are you sure? Doesn't go on? Well, you always, I mean, I, I always distrust authors who say they've got these plans to, you know, write seven books or ten books or however. You know, I just think uh, it's, as we say, and you suck it and see. Uh, and three seemed like a nice number, you know, to be out there and see how successful Seven, two, three. Four, well, five. yeah, three's a trilogy, isn't it? I mean, you know, so what I'll, about I'll find out if anybody likes it. What about the number nine? I mean, uh, false die. Oh, well, that's a footballing yeah. term. Yeah, it's explained in the beginning. Yeah, it's Maybe you can explain it to no. the audience. <laughs> what is false die football? Well, it's a number nine player who pretends to be a number ten. Or it could be the other way around, actually. Might be a number ten who pretends to be a number nine. Um, this is a, a midfielder who's actually really an attacker, like Messi is a, is a false nine. And he's also right back. Yeah. 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 Whereas Ibra uh, Ibrahimovic is is not a false nine because he he's lazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<clears throat> it's really the older the player, the less likely they are to be a full sniper because they're not fit enough to keep running back and covering. This is, uh, I'm looking at all the women in the audience and I'm thinking, mm, yeah, this is really not interesting, is it? Well, <laughs> I know women, they look more football than men. Well, if you go to, if you go to see Arsenal, though, you'll see a lot of women. Um, and it's great, because uh, actually, well, I will say football was invented so men could stop thinking about sex for 45 minutes. <laughs> or 90. Uh, well, no, because half time is invented, uh, so they can start <laughs> thinking about sex again for 15 minutes. Um, and then 45, another 45 minutes. But it's true, when you go to football, you do not think about sex for 45 minutes. So it's kind of relaxing. Die falsche Neu auf Deutsch. 2015 auf Englisch erschienen, jetzt neu übersetzt äh, auf, auf Deutsch. Und zwar von, das möchte ich gerne dazu sagen, korrekterweise. Ich muss mal nachschauen. Die heißen äh, Hannes Meyer und Simone Jakob im Gletkotter Verlag erschienen. Ähm, this book um, is about football. Yeah? It's not about a trainer, but it's about really football. So if people don't like football, well, actually, uh, it's actually, I'm, I, I'm encouraged that a lot of women have read it. Um, okay. and, uh, because actually it's a crime. So if you like a novel about a detective, uh, then it just happens to be a detective who is a football manager. Which uh, hadn't... It seems to be a kind of obvious thing, because football managers are psychologists. Mm -hmm. um, they have to work out what a player's skill is, what is, you know, if he's in the best position, why something happened during a game. It's, um, in so much of life, uh, people become detectives, uh, they, and the more successful people are in their chosen professions, I think there's, a, there's an element of the detective in almost anyone who's successful at what they're doing. And if you look at the sort of great managers, they're not only detectives, I, I would argue that some of the, the good ones are great philosophers as well. I know that seems ridiculous, but if you look at a sort of a, a manager like uh, Mourinho, who I love, um, he is a great philosopher. Um, he says things that are provocative and quite insightful, actually. Um, and in England, we have a great tradition of, of football philosophers. We had a man called Bill Shankly, um, we had another man called Brian Clough, um, and then we had another man called Alex Ferguson. He wasn't such a good philosopher, actually, because he, he chewed gum. <laughs> and it stops you saying that, actually. That's probably why I chewed it. <clears throat> so I like I like the the life insights that these people offer because they seem to be about football. You studied law and philosophy. Yes, I, I did. Think? Yeah. So it helps you. Um, does it help? I don't know. <laughs> to be a philosopher, I don't know if it helps or not really. But I think um, in life, yes, um, it's good to be able to take a step out of yourself and look at what you do and can, and put it in the context of the mm. real world. Wie gesagt, das ist das dritte, vielleicht das letzte oder auch nicht, rund um Scott Manson, einen Trainer, der bei einer fiktiven Fußballmannschaft London City trainiert und am Beginn des Buches seinen Job verloren hat. Why did you choose a, a, a fictive uh, a football club? Why did you take out awesome now? Did you fear that uh, Tottenham will kill you? Or? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I fear that no Tottenham fan would ever read a book about, a book, a book about Arsenal. <clears throat> I mean, like Fever Pitch, which is in one of the great books about football by Nick Hornby, who's an Arsenal fan. No, no Tottenham person has ever read this book. So you're killing your market by picking a real team. And also, there's a legal issue, you know, could you? By the way, they, there is on Sunday, there is a match, Tottenham Arsenal. Yes. Yeah? Yes. You, you go back to see it? Uh, I shan't be at home to watch that, unfortunately. Okay. But, uh, I would, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> so uh, I picked a, fi uh, a fictional team because it meant I could say um, difficult things about the game as well. You know, controversial things about money and bribery and corruption, which I couldn't I've never said about Arsenal, because it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I could have said all that about Chelsea.
Es ist <lacht> unglaublich, es ist unbelievable. Ich, äh, wenn Sie Google im Arsenal, ich habe das gemacht, auf Deutsch, nur die deutschen Seiten, Sie in Wikipedia finden, sind glaube ich 25 Seiten. Äh, ich habe im Englischen gar nicht nachgesehen. Also, it's unbelievable what you find about Arsenal. Okay, the club is now 130 years old. Uh, this year, I think. Yeah. But uh, you find everything, uh, or maybe not everything, but uh, you also find, I mean, talking about money, who are the owners, the group wird derzeit geschätzt auf ungefähr 1,4 Milliarden US-Dollar an Wert. The, they, they pay for the, the players each year 100 million or so. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So. Well, you see, well, I mean, that's for another reason I wrote the book, was because yeah. the English Premier League now is the richest in the world. It's like worth 5 billion. Um, also, so, also after the Brexit then? Uh, yeah. <laughs> after Brexit, yeah, it's still the biggest money league in the world. And it's like a huge um, black hole. Uh, in the sense of it's a singularity, and it just sucks everything into it. Um, you know, money from Europe, players from Europe, who are wholly unsuited to playing in the English game, like Pogba, um, to just pick one, um, and it just it just it just becomes this huge event horizon that just sucks everything into it because, it's, as, as I say, there's so much money in the game. Uh, and that was a source of fascination to me because it's not just a sport now, it's, it's about culture, it's about finance, it's about you know, its place in, in British society, in European society. And even, we've even got your best manager now, which is Jürgen Klopp. Um, and he's, he's there, and he's good actually, you know, I, he's been a real breath of fresh air in England because who thought Jürgen Klopp had a great sense of humour? <laughs> but um, he did. He didn't have one when he was at Dortmund. Ja, Frage war zu gut. Aber Sie sehen, er ist natürlich, er weiß unglaublich viel über Fußball und das finden Sie auch in, in dem Buch. Es geht um Korruption, es geht um Geschäfte, um die Machenschaften, es geht um Drogen.